Global change is happening as we enter fall. We're starting to see snow show up in the forecast across parts of northern Russia, also across Alaska as we enter fall. That could impact our winter weather. We're also looking at what's going on in the tropics today. Over the next seven days, we're going to be watching this system as it moves east. That could be a problem. And then we're watching what happens in the Gulf as more tropical activity is expected later this month. Welcome to the video today, guys. This isn't a full winter forecast. I'll link down below. I do a weekly winter weather update. I'll have another one for you coming this week but I do want to show you some new data that came in on the European today especially as we get toward the middle of the month look at the snow starting to show up here across parts of Siberia of course we've got some across parts of the north slope of Alaska but we are building that snow at least it's trying to show up across northern Russia is it a sign of an early winter I don't know, but I can tell you one thing, the MJO phase that we're looking at, I'm not going to get into all of those details, but let me tell you, it's moving into a favorable phase that we're seeing for tropical development right now in the Eastern Pacific. We've got two storms out here, reflective of the phase. And as long as this global pattern stays where it's at and continues to move over to phase two, I think you got to watch here and into the Gulf, even the Caribbean over the next week or two. Here's a look at the European Ensemble Guidance. This uses multiple runs. It combines different plots of what might happen happen using different variables and you get the idea of why we're seeing such a spread as we go out in time the different parameters are giving you different results still pretty good confidence that this storm will continue to the west here's where the question happens as we get into next week so we're talking about a week from today are we looking at a hurricane i think we probably will be at the very least a tropical storm this one feels very much like aaron all right, trying to move to the north. I think you also got to watch what's happening back here across parts of the Gulf, and I'll show you why in just a second. Now, if this continues to move to the north, which it looks like it will, now I don't know that all bets are off. Now you also become really favorable across parts of the Gulf back into the Caribbean as the upper level pattern starts to shift, right? So we've got this trough that's swinging through the eastern United States now. That lifts out as we head into next week. Your ridge starts to build back into parts of the Caribbean across the western Atlantic. This looks pretty favorable, so if something develops, something pops here, or if it moves into this region, if this storm moves into this area, this doesn't look good, right? So you end up with something like this. You could drive this thing into the Gulf and then maybe north. A long way to go. I would just caution you to watch it over the next two weeks. Here's a quick look at the weather across the country as we head through Friday. We've got this big upper low spinning just south of the Hudson Bay. It's brought some snow into parts of Ontario, mixing with the rain. Also some cold, showery conditions across the Great Lakes. A hard freeze possible as we head into late Friday night into Saturday across parts of North Dakota. It's also really windy across this part of the country today. Multiple high wind warnings, wind advisories, super hot across the Northwest, and a flood risk across the Southwest. Those are the big stories across the West. Otherwise, as we head into the weekend, cool conditions persist across the Great Lakes. We do see more rain chances across the West and rain chances moving back into the Pacific Northwest, that will drop your temperatures down some. All right, here's a look at the severe weather as we head into Friday. Our front will be draped out here from West Virginia back into Texas, so some strong storms possible into the afternoon. Take a look at the future radar. This sort of times things out and gives you an idea of how these storms will form and where they'll be. Quite a few of them have been strong on Thursday, and we'll I think we'll see another pulse of storms try to get going here across parts of West Virginia, Ohio, back towards Central Kentucky, and as far north and east as Pittsburgh, maybe even just a little bit further to the north, and these storms will have a tendency to move off to the north and east as we move into late Friday night and Saturday. Some heavy downpours, gusty winds, maybe even some hail with these, and that line stretches back into Kentucky too, and you notice the rain moving east as we head into uh, Saturday along our front. So more rain moving back into Tennessee. We're also going to get some showers across Mississippi, Alabama, and look how our front lines up on Saturday. It could be a rough go heading into the afternoon and evening hours from Georgia all the way to Maine as our front moves through and then showers hanging around the Great Lakes with some cool conditions. Here's a look at your temperatures. Waking up on Friday morning will be in the 40s, maybe even some 30s across the arrowhead of Minnesota. Some cool air continues to be reinforced from northwest to southeast, almost a west-northwest wind or so. Further to the south, it's pretty hot across the deep south with temperatures in the 90s. And then as we move into Friday night into Saturday, some cooler temperatures starting to work into parts of western New York, the upstate, also into parts of the Northeast, Vermont, New Hampshire, we're going to see our temperatures drop back at least into the 40s at night as we wake up Sunday morning. Cool too, back across the Bluegrass State all the way down into Tennessee, even West Virginia dropping back into the 40s at least into the mountains, and then heading into Sunday, 
Temperatures cool across the Great Lakes, a little bit warmer though, and pleasant here across the Ohio Valley. Many of these areas in the 70s for Sunday as the heat gets squelched way to the south heading into Sunday. And just one more preview day, a cold night I think for some areas heading into early Monday morning. Maybe some mountain valley frost if you can get cold enough in the deeper valleys and you can calm down. Otherwise, we warm up kind of nice as we head into uh, Monday afternoon with temperatures back into the 70s in many areas. 60s the further north you go with 80s pushed all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Back into the Central Plains. Some rain possible across Oklahoma, down into Texas. Some of the showers and storms could start to get heavy into the afternoon across Central and West Texas. Also across the Four Corner states, which we'll look at in just a minute. And then rain pushing east through Missouri. Further to the south into Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana, into Kentucky. Some of these could get strong. Also into parts of Arkansas tomorrow night, Friday night into early Saturday morning, and then weakening. And then as we move into uh, Saturday during the afternoon and evening, our front pushes pretty far to the south, so we're really drying out across this part of the country with temperatures also coming down too. Here's a look at your numbers early Friday morning, Friday afternoon, notice the 80s, 90s, even 100s across parts of Texas. We're starting to push that heat way to the south. There comes your front, cooler air moving into Oklahoma, highs as we head into Saturday afternoon, Oklahoma City, maybe in the mid-70s, even up into a good part of Missouri, Kansas, very comfortable here. And, and there could be some really cold conditions early uh, into Saturday morning across parts of North Dakota, into the Intermountain West, into the parts of Montana, Wyoming. Uh, but overall, though, a pretty nice fall setup. All right, across the southwest, this is where problems are going to be as we're seeing some tropical moisture move into the far southwest. Some heavy rain possible through Friday and Saturday. Multiple flood watches again out for parts of Arizona, California, even into New Mexico with all of this heavy rain over the next couple of days. And then rain starts to spread back to the north and west too around this area of low pressure that's moving uh, into the northwest. So there will be rain chances going up as we head through the weekend into the first part of next week. Showers continue across the four corner states. Here come the rain chances heading into Sunday and Monday, again into the Pacific Northwest as this onshore flow starts to pick up and an area of low pressure moves near the coast. So we'll see some windy conditions, also some showery conditions Monday into Tuesday. Here's a look at your temperatures as we get into early Friday morning, as we move into Friday afternoon. A little more cloud cover across the Southwest, keeping temperatures in check with all of the rain around. Still warm across the Pacific Northwest. Let's fast forward all the way to Sunday into Monday. Temperatures cooling down, especially across the Northwest compared to where we are right now with these temperatures that are just off the charts. Again, if you're looking for a winter forecast, I do a complete update over here. We look at some of the global features that I think are going to impact this winter. I'll see you over there as we talk all about it.